Well, hello, Mud Rumors. It is Carmen here with Mako, and today we're going to go over the glaze profile for our stoneware glaze, Abalone. So Abalone is a soft pink semi-matte glaze. It breaks great over texture and works awesome in combinations. Here we've got its label. We've got our Cone 6 white stoneware results with our Cone 5 to 10 firing range recommendation. We're going to review the variation that happens within that range today. Um, some other information, we've got the AP and dinnerware safe seal. This is where the um, lot number goes. And then we have all of the different um, application instructions and tips. So definitely check out the label for information. And if you need more information or, are, or have an older label and are not quite sure if you have the most up-to-date information, definitely check out the individual color page on our website. That is where you will find the most up-to-date information. That is at makocolors.com. That is our website and that is where you will find the information that we are posting about our products. Uh, so to start, as always, I'd like to do a quick little application demo with this glaze, just to give you an idea of what the glaze itself looks like, and then kind of to showcase what a good coat of glaze will look like as well. So here I've got my number four soft fan. We do make a number eight fan, and I recommend that for those that tend to be heavy hand or that tend to be light handed or else if you're applying it on a larger surface. I also like to use the number eight fan um, when I'm doing combinations. So in combinations, I'd usually do two coats of each glaze like I did on these um, combo cups here. And in that instance, if I'm just doing two coats, I like those coats to be really nice and heavy. So that's why I like to use the number eight when I'm doing uh, two coats. So here I've got my tile. I'm gonna glaze it just like I did these tiles here. So I've got one, two, three coats and then three full coats on the back. So I like to really swirl my brush in the glaze here, make sure it's nice and loaded and just really slap that glaze on there. Abalone um, tends to get a little thick in the jar and that's not a problem really. Uh, if it's kind of too thick for brush, then for brushing, then you might want to add a little bit of water, but in general, this glaze performs well uh, when it goes on nice and thick. So there I've got one full coat, as you can see, I'm really just laying it on the surface there, not spreading it too thin. I kind of like this brush stroke variation that's happening. This glaze can produce good variation to it, and I like to showcase that uh, with the application. All right, so first let's review our cone Oh, cone six results. <laughs> Here's our cone six results. Uh, so here you can see this is a really, really, really soft pink color. Um, this matte is an amazing finish. Very, very nice and smooth and soft. And I love this um, darker pink that builds up in the surface. And not only is it more saturated in color, but it has a glossy finish. I love these glazes that are matte and finished, but will pull a nice glossy variation. Um, and so this would actually be part of our breaking matte performance grouping. Um, and all of those glazes, they are gonna have this nice matte finish. They're gonna pull with a glossy variation and then bring a lovely color space to uh, combinations as well. Uh, that can be found in our comprehensive stoneware guide, which is available under the resources page on our website. So this glaze is pretty stable. It can add mobility when it's used in combination, but on its own, even three coats, we're not really getting much buildup or anything here. So then on the back here, we've got it just on a flat surface. Not a lot of variation there aside from the um, application. So you can see it's kind of like this pink lavender-y color. It's a very, very subtle, but a really, really wonderful, wonderful finish. So here is our cone five results. 
here we have, and this looks like it's a little bit more pink at cone five. So we still have this nice soft finish. And actually it's a little glossy at three coats. Um, I found this <laughs> to be really common with the uh, breaking mat uh, performance grouping. At cone five, they're all glossy, <laughs> which I thought was really, really kind of funny because um, you wouldn't expect it to be shinier at cone five than it is at cone six, but that's been kind of across the board with the results that we found in our studios. So kind of interesting, fun fact. But anyway, so we got one, two, and three coats. The color saturation builds up with more application. And then, like I said, the cone five tends to be a little bit more pink than the cone six. And then we have it here. Just three coats on a flat surface. Alrighty, so next we can go ahead and apply our second coat to our tile here. Go ahead and make sure my brush is nice and loaded. So we're going on the surface nice and smooth. All right, there's two coats. And two coats. So nice and easy, spreading it really well on the surface. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just make sure that brush is not dragging. That's really, really what I'm trying to drill in here with these uh, application demos. Alrighty, so next we have our Cone 10 performance. Um, and this is pretty cool. We've got Cone 10 reduction. Um, basically here we've got a darker grayish color. This looks like it got pretty heavy reduction. Um, and actually if you check our label and even on our website, <laughs> they'll have different Cone 10 results for this. So this is one that has a lot of variation with its performance at Cone 10 because it can be really reactive. A lot of the time I'll see it be this beautiful um, mottled purplish color. Um, I kind of see that more often than I see this result. Uh, that is featured on our website in our color swatch gallery for our stonework glazes. We have our cone six and cone 10 results posted there. So definitely check that out. Um, but this glaze does perform well at cone 10. We don't have any weird um, surface defects or anything like that. Um, just keep in mind there is, there can be variation with the color performance um, when you bring it up to that temperature. All right, so next we have the um, flux results. So here we have uh, flux applied underneath the abalone. So we, I applied two coats of light flux, two coats of dark flux, and then three coats of abalone on top of it. Um, like I said, this glaze can produce mobility in combination. As you can see here, these glazes that break really well over texture, you can anticipate um, them to work really, really well with the fluxes because they'll produce some mobility or sag, but not necessarily run off of your piece. Um, as with anything though, the flux is going to be dependent on your application. You know, if I applied four coats of flux, maybe this would run off my piece. If I applied five coats of abalone, maybe that would run off my piece. So the more material that you're putting on um, in these combinations that kind of are in that sweet spot, that's gonna produce more mobility. So keep that in mind um, with your application. This light flux looks sweet on the surface with the abalone though, and the dark flux, it kind of overtakes that subtle pigmentation that's in this glaze. And then on the back here, we have got the flux applied over top of the abalone. And you know, I applied it in about a one inch band, so we do get a decent amount of mobility, not quite as much interaction, aside from this really yummy part on the edge here. And then we've got the cone 10 with flux. And this uh, result sort of surprised me a lot because you're not quite as mobile at cone 10, which is really surprising. And then this pink color that showcases itself um, with the light flux I thought was really interesting. So both of these have flux applied over top of abalone. We have three coats of abalone and then two coats of flux on top of that. So this will give you a good idea of the color performance. 
um, or interaction, but I definitely would do tests uh, with this guy. So there are the different firing temperatures. So here we'll showcase the different uh, clay bodies. So like I said previously, we do fire all of our samples at cone six on a white clay body unless otherwise noted. So we do have the cone 10 here, um, but generally our samples are all gonna be on white clay bodies. So we did wanna showcase how these glazes perform on different clay bodies. Um, our alternative clay body testing, we do fire to cone six with a 10 minute hold, and that is to help with any outgassing that might need to happen with these different materials that are in these darker clay bodies. And that tends to generally give us a good surface. A lot of the time, if you're firing um, glazes on a different clay body, you're gonna have a reaction or different surface issues. And that's kind of been the one thing that we found to consistently alleviate any issues with that. So keep in mind, cone six, 10 minute hold, we just do it for everything. We fire on a not white stoneware clay body um, and it seems to help and work really, really well. So here we've got it on a white speckled body. Uh, we don't really have any surface issues. This color looks really, really nice and pulls these speckles along with it. So that looks pretty good on the white speckled. Here we've got a brown speckled, still a nice finish. The color is still subtle. Um, but that dark, uh, the brown clay body is influencing the outcome. As you can see here, it's a little bit darker. And then um, the speckles do come through and it breaks well over texture. Here we've got it on a dark brown clay body. You can see the finish is maybe not as high gloss as it is on the whiter clays, but we still don't really have any surface issues or anything like that. Still a nice bright color. It's kind of interesting how well it covers the um, dark brown because I don't consider this to be a super opaque glaze uh, but it definitely affected the dark brown clay here all right so let's get our final coat on this test tile here so we've got one two and we're going to apply our third coat and our third coat this will go on nice and quick because it's already been saturated and we're just doing this little bit here. So there's three coats. And then here's three coats. All right. And so when we fire this to cone six, it would resemble this tile here. All right, and then finally, let's check out our uh, combination results using the abalone. So as I said previously, abalone can add mobility to combinations, although it is generally stable on its own. So here we have it layered underneath desert dusk. So I applied two coats of abalone to the entire piece here and then two coats of desert dusk um, just to the bottom of this texture. You can see we did get a nice amount of mobility here. It's pooling pretty significantly on this bottom rim here. I am a pretty heavy glazer. So two coats of each is uh, more than enough to produce mobility for me. If you happen to be a lighter glazer, maybe three coats would be what you would need to have this kind of uh, finish happening. So definitely always do testing, please. All right, and then we've got smoke over abalone. So you can see the mobility that's happening here based off of the color kind of pulling itself down. You have a nice buildup of more of that blue happening at the bottom here, and it's all gotten pulled down from the top. So I applied two coats of abalone first, two coats of smoke to the bottom of the texture, and then we moved quite a bit down the surface here. And then here we have abalone under indigo rain. So uh, here we've got the two coats of abalone and the two coats of the indigo rain. 
happening to the bottom of the texture here. Um, the Indigo Rain has alabaster as a base glaze, which can perform really similar to the abalone. So this really got some mobility. I was kind of lucky to not even get it on the <laughs> shelf here. So mixed with the crystal glaze, that was really, really going to be moving. But you get these really nice striations that happen um, with the Indigo Rain here. So again, these are all fired at cone six. We do have cone 10 results for these combinations as well as many others on our website. So please check out the glaze combination gallery there. It's searchable. We've got cone 06, cone six and cone 10 combinations there. So it's a really, really good resource to check out. Um, and I think that is all that I have for everybody today. Please do leave questions in the comments or any concerns you have. If there's any way that we can improve this, please let us know. And as always, make it Mako.